the question was, how can black people take the template of group economics and cooperation that the Jews have? I believe, because I'm going to go into the hookup a little bit later, but I believe black people can learn something from the Jews in their cooperative way. I answered that. Right? Okay, but let me I, just I, say this really quickly, because we've got to take a break. There's a book you've got to get, Germany's Black Holocaust by Furpo Carr, 1890 to 1945. Never before revealed details about how Germany practiced the Holocaust oh, yeah. that they did on the Jews in Germany. They practiced it Let's in South Africa. Let's do a nigga dry run. We will dry run the Sunday niggas and then <laughs> we will do it on the Jews. Book by Furbo Carr, Germany's Black Holocaust, 1890 to 1945. Check it out. We'll be back at 2.2. The show is crazy. Oh! There's a direct relationship between having the businesses and being in prison. Go find an Asian. See, I'm in the Asians you can find in American prisoners. They ain't going to be in there. But 51% of your prisoners will be black because you don't, blacks don't have any businesses and industries. There's a direct link. Blacks won't practice group economics. Blacks won't practice group politics. If you don't practice, you're setting yourselves up. I told you that five-story building. You're setting yourself to get wiped out. Understand the nature of race, which is economics. If you, if you build the first floor, it's economic. Build your businesses and your industries. Control buildings and industry, and put that pools in your money. And hold that money. And, it's a, and practice group economics <clears throat> with it. Arab and Asian money bounces <clears throat> 12 or 13 times for it leaves. Jewish money bounces 18 times. Black folk got to learn how to practice group economics. Black Americans spend every penny they get outside their own community. Then you take the money and the wealth that you get from that first floor and go to the second floor. The second floor is politics. You then take that money on the first floor and you control your politics. Black folk must quit allowing people to tell them to go out and vote. Vote for what? Nobody's going to do anything for black folk in politics. Politics is controlled by money. Major corporations who got the money. That's what controls politics. If you have no money, you have no say-so, you have no benefits coming. So you take your money and you control and you take your money from the first floor, you buy every politician on the second floor. And any politician you can't buy, you rent or lease them to get what you need. Then once you get the second floor under control with the politician, with your money, then you go to the third floor. The third floor then is the police department and the court system. You take your money from the first floor and your politics on the second floor and you control the court system and the police departments. Then the fourth floor, you is your, the fourth floor then is media. You then take the money that you generate off the first floor from business and industries <clears throat> and you go after radio stations, TV stations, newspapers, and cable systems so that you can now inform and communicate with your own people. Right now, <clears throat> black folk only control less than 35 thousandths of 1% of the media in the United States. Out of 12,000 radio stations, black folk own about something like about 75, 80. That's all. You own no cable systems. You don't have a daily newspaper. You have nothing of importance. You, don't, you got about one black TV station. And you, so you can't communicate with your people. You can't inform your people. You can't do anything. You can have Rush Limbaugh and all the rest of the guys talking about racism all day long and bad-mouthing you and O'Reilly's. They can talk, call black folk all kind of names all day long. What are you going to do? You can't respond. You can't even communicate with your own people because you, you don't have an economic base. 51% of all the prisoners in the United States are black people. You know, you know you only make up 12% of the population. That's no accident. It's because you don't control the economics and the politics. And they're going to go after the weakest people they can get their hands on to incarcerate them. That's the black folk. And what are you going to do in response to it when they, when they, when they over incarcerate you? You're going to go out and have a march, a demonstration. We're going to march. March for what? Who cares? Marching never changed anything. Hello. Amen. And, and, and now you see that? Amen. That's the hookup. He gave you the blueprint. Dr. Claude Anderson the gave you down. the blueprint for the hookup. The Asians buy their politicians. All black people do is vote and then get on you because you not voting. Mm. There's something in us spiritually. Black people that died so you can vote. Yes. I'm so tired of hearing you, that you, shit. You think your vote counts. <laughs> but here's the thing. You think your vote counts. You're using the wrong C word. Your vote costs. Mm. Do you understand? The other people in the game know that your vote 
cost. Why, it doesn't count. So why do people, but why do, why do you think so many black people will go out there and waste their time voting? Because everything is because, a religion for black folks. Yes. So you basically even, saying, even their political representatives, they get caught up in the religion of patriarch. Uh, 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 where do they uh, go to get voters? It's ignorance, right? It's, yeah, ignorance. it's ignorance. Absolutely. They, so they, they, they've been taught to believe something, right? Okay, okay. wait, wait, wait. There's, a, there's, a, there's an elephant in the room. Okay, you. Namely, okay. uh, go ahead. <laughs> you ride, no, you ain't you, Doc. You just ride an elephant. You just right. on. He's on the mahut. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I feel lucky. I feel you're actually going to agree with me on this. Okay. So, 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 so have all your. I don't know. So get ready to shove it back down my throat, like you know, which I expect you to do. Um, I think that the challenge, the elephant in the room, is that people don't do what's important. They do what they care enough about. Mm -hmm. And so how do you get your community to care enough about it so that they make some changes? Because what we're talking about, it's important, it's important, you know, it's important for me to diet. I don't care enough about it. So how do you get your community to care enough to take action? And that's a great point. But what I find is when you have a high level, a high level of quality information, care gets connected to that. We are bereft of the high quality information. So when we, this is what this forum is about, okay. Doc. Okay, so, so if I come to you and say, L listen, there was a Jewish guy who told Dame, Damien Dash, Jay-Z's partner, he told, he told Dame Dash something that resonated instantly throughout our community. You know what he said to Dame Dash? He said, the problem with black people in America is that you guys are liquid, liquid money. money. You're the world's ATM machine. So let me throw one last thing in. That's what you, we need to okay, hear. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. So the, hey, wait, I'm let throwing one ask. last thing in, and then you guys, then you guys react. Um, one of the, and you know this about your teenage kids too. One, one of the things that's most demotivating in people is when they think that no matter what they do today, it's not going to affect a dismal future. And so what they do is they focus on what will give them a quick smile today that they can't hold on to. And so, so if you feel like you have no power to essentially change the future, mm -hmm. you're just going to look for a little bit of pleasure today, and you're not going to build anything. So how? So if you agree with any of that, or tweak it, you want to reject it, do whatever you I, want. I like it. I like it. Uh, Corey? Jeff? I just feel like the masses when we talk about black people, are misled. They actually believe that if they vote, it's going to make a difference. They actually believe that some man in a sheet is going to come save them one day when they die. Right. All of the stuff that they have been taught. Right. Um, since they Who is were, the man in the since, sheet? This little Kyle white, Gasol? this white the sky Jesus daddy. Christ looking <laughs> sky daddy. Yeah. I, I just can't believe that people really believe this, but I... I <laughs> I mean, who there am I to judge them all. like that? It's really sad <laughs> that that so many can be misled with a myth like that. But I'm just saying, like, what happened to Black Wall Street? It got bombed. What do you think will happen if a Black Wall Street is built today, Zo? It, it, they, like, again, <laughs> let me you, just say you this. You guys, will... you guys are going to jump on me for saying this, but let me say it again. Quincy Jones told me this. Uh, you know what he said? What? That motherfucker said, it's good that the young nah, guys are... I, 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 Oh, do the voice? Yeah, of course. Shit, man. It's, it's, it's good that the hip-hoppers are out there getting their money, you know. Shit, you know. Get your money. Put, get, put your boys on, you know. Pay them. That's great. But the thing you got to do is see if your money has any power. Now, listen to, see, go out and see if your money has any power. Your money don't have power. Because if you ever do anything that will build your community, it. they're going to bring it down. BET was gangstered. From that weirdo, <laughs> Go Rob on. Johnson, Go they gangsted it from him. Mm -hmm. And anybody else who comes up with an entity that grows into something, mm -hmm. they're going to take it. If you saw that movie Sugar Hill, what was it, Sergeant Phil Canton? Oh, 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 no, no, yeah. no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, Harlem uh, Nights. Harlem Nights. Yeah. Sergeant Phil Cantone is going to come visit you. I'm living in a and hovel. He's he going to make you an offer that you literally Cannot can't refuse, refuse or you going to die. Exactly. And Black Wall Street, if anybody knows about it. All we... that putting your money together shit, that is a fucking, that is imagining. We at war. Right. And the, and, and the only way the shit going to change is when it finally jump off. Because some shit going to happen one day. Yeah. That's just going to make everybody say. Yeah. Well, let's talk into ah! one. Let's, let's, let's speak to <laughs> one of what, the, uh, the living survivors. Survivors of Black Wall Street, 
Bobby, I'm sure you were there when it actually happened. Wow. Bobby was in his 30s when this went down <laughs> in 1921. So that would make you 161 years old? Jesus. So Bobby, talk to us about the history of Black Wall Street, its significance, collective group economics that was happening there that really made everybody surrounding that town very envious and created high racial tensions. Go deeper. Well, what I know about it is uh, the uh, group that people might still be familiar with, the Gap Band, yeah. was named after Greenwood, Archer, and Pine, and Pine yeah. which was the richest three, straight, three streets controlled by black people in America in, in the early 1900s. They were actually ahead of the curve. And that model was so powerful that it became the envy of that general area. And the way they were able to reverse that was with inflaming the people who controlled the guns. Uh, that was the only time in the history of the United States where an American piece of saw was bombed mm -hmm. by military Americans. and police uh, by the operation. That right. will bomb some shit now yeah. if it gets built. No. And the problem is, after that was bombed, we didn't go destroy the enemy. <laughs> so how you yeah. gonna build it again when the enemy's sitting there right now waiting on you to? I dare you here's to build some Here's why, in my opinion. Go ahead. Here's why. We cannot destroy this enemy. This enemy is going to destroy itself. Mm. Okay? Well, un unless and until Puffy and a homeless black man are being chased down the street by the same dude at the same time, and Puffy's money don't mean shit, that's mm. the only way black people are going to organize. What has to happen is this system, this plate, you're trying to find a clean spot on a shitty plate. Until this plate is white clean, until China goes, you know what? Fuck your bombs. We got bombs too. And guess what? Your kids finna speak Mandarin. I until believe they're gonna then, destroy themselves because that's a, yeah. even the water is I'm contaminated a now because they can't clean all of that goddamn medicine that everybody <laughs> is pissing out out of the out water. Of water. These people have created a system that's going to come and eat them as well. Yeah. They can't even hide from that's the shit no down. more. And, and, and I'll that's tell you, here's, here's, Evil another, motherfucker. Here, here's another angle. Let's look at it this way. It is projected. We're not mad at y'all. The, the white boys in the control booth are like, holy shit. But they it's bulletproof. I envy that. <laughs> but, <laughs> here's what's projected by the year 2015 for African Americans with regards to economics. We're going to be spending $1.1 trillion annually. $1.1 trillion. Do, do you understand how much money that is? I, I, don't, I ignore that number. So let me just say, though, it's very important that we understand the power we have on the front end. We're like front end com, uh, users to a computer. All we know how to do is uh, send an email. And you think we don't understand the hardware in, in the CPU, right? Yeah. We don't understand the back stuff that's going on. So what's happening is society is molding us as end users. We never get behind to see what's really going on as it affects our lives and our decisions. You're not allowed to. Yeah, well, yeah we are. Oh, but, yeah. Let me tell you. But see, we, we are allowed. But what it is, is we are a nation of cowards because we know when we peek behind the veil Woo! and unveil the Oz that we could get killed. But we have to be willing to die or sacrifice. nothing will change. Well, That's a spiritual practice, sacrifice. Got to take a quick break. Okay. When we come back, we'll deal with more. Black economics, we in trouble, nigga. Oh! <laughs> has a rap career is beyond me. I don't get it. I don't, and he takes his shirt off. Oh my God, he looks like 50 pounds of chewed Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Now you are in white fashion. You know white boys always leave the house like they're gonna help somebody move. Get <laughs> and defend the horrible house. There are some horrible people. And what you need to do is start policing your own. I didn't know. Uh, oh, I didn't. I, I. Wow. You stuttering. I couldn't. I can't even go with 
my original rant. I'm too hot right I'm now. I want to say throw. something about black businesses. Though. Okay, I'm too we'll hot get there. right now. Go ahead. Uh, what needs to happen, in my opinion, and I'm always catching heat for this, uh, black people, quit worrying about uh, uh, recycling your dollars. Quit worrying about what you're doing with your dollars. Here we go. Because pretty soon, your dollars will only be worth keeping you warm when you burn them. Mm. What you need to concern... Niggas don't believe that, though. Go no. deeper. What you need to concern yourself with is aligning your tribes because some shit is coming. I don't know what it is. I don't have any inside information. I only have the information that you have, that the dollar you spend, the niggas you see on videos with money, anytime you see a nigga with a pile of money, that means he don't have much of it. Because uh, you don't ever see Warren Buffett next to a stack of $100 no. bills. You don't see the people who really have money standing next to it. <laughs> you better start figuring out what the fuck you going to do when your money don't mean shit. Because your, very soon, your money won't mean shit. And what will is the words you have and the tribes that you have collected and the bonds that you have made. Right. And the bullets that you have and the canned goods that you have. Because yeah. some shit. The feces is about to hit the rotary oscillator. <laughs> so you quit with all, all the, how many Jordans you got. I hope you can trade with them because some shit's coming. And mm -hmm. people don't recognize that money is the trap. Look up the Latin word for dollar. It means trap. They don't understand that money in America equals debt. We did a show on it that shows you they, they create debt with money. And money is different from currency, and power is different than money. So, Zoe, do well, you agree with what that guy, Dr. Claude Anderson, said? Oh, absolutely. In this particular system, absolutely. For as long as it'll because work. Uh, the paper dollar is about, it, it's just like it's financial Vaseline, it just lubricates society. So you can get from one place to the next smoothly. That's all it is. It doesn't represent power. That's what Quincy said. He said, make sure you get the money, but then I want you to go out and see if your money has any power. That, people don't know the difference. I, so I, look at the propaganda. We're going to put out a gang of rappers who talk about money, clothes, and hoes. But none of them have power. Most of those rappers lose their money. Bow Wow and, and, and a whole line of others. Most of them lose their money because they didn't align with the power that that money could have been a, a, a conduit to.